Mike Wilner's here, and no doubt he's seen it. He's a smart guy. Hey, Mike, welcome back to the RP Show. They're raging. Jays fans are raging. Uh, you're right out front of Rogers Center. Um, your thoughts on the four and six start, please. I don't have a real problem with it. I mean, the uh, the offense certainly hasn't been good by any means. Uh, a lot of games a lot worse than that terrible offense that we saw last year. But, you know, if fans are raging, let's remember, they just opened the season on a 10-game road trip visiting three of the five best teams in the league, and they were one win away from splitting it. Five and five was like the best possible outcome of this road trip, and they went four and six. It's not a problem. Yeah, these are the people that I'm talking to. I'm wondering what you're, what, uh, what you're hearing. Is it not as much panic there in Toronto? I mean, that's just people's thing now is to one-up each other with panic. Um, how do you feel about the way the team has played through the opening 10? I mean, I would have liked to have seen a, a, a lot more offense a lot of times. I think they scored um, three runs or fewer in seven of the 10 games. Um, and they're, you know, the two losses in Tampa Bay, and the whole series in Houston, it felt like once they fell behind by a run, the game was over. They were exceedingly lucky to win that game in Houston with the two-run homer by David Schneider with two out in the ninth inning when they hadn't done anything all game. They set franchise records for futility in the three-game series of offense with nine hits and hitting 106 as a team. It was, it was terrible. It was hard to watch. It was awful. But then in New York, you know, they came out against a 6-1 and one team, and they won the first game, again, with no offense. They got the Ernie Clement homer in the seventh and scored their other two home runs, or scored their other two runs on wild pitches. But then Saturday and Sunday, even though they lost, it, w it was different. They almost came back from 6 nothing down. They made it a one-run ball game on, on Saturday. Uh, they had the winning run at the plate in the ninth inning. And... On Sunday, too, uh, even though they were down 5-1 in the third inning. So it didn't, you know, they weren't playing like, hey, it's over uh, when it, you know, when we're down one nothing, or even down 5-1 or 6 nothing or 8-2. Um, and I think the important thing is the top of the lineup started to hit. First eight games of the season, Springer, Vladdy, Bo combined to hit 146. Uh, but now, you know, Springer... Reach base seven times in New York. Bo's reached base in seven of his last nine plate appearances. Vlad's reached base in four of his last eight with a homer and a double. So it's starting. Look, everyone says it's a reminder of last year and how bad the offense was. But the Blue Jays were eighth in the major leagues in OPS last year and 15th in runs scored. This year, the, uh, the sheer offlitude of that offense over the first eight games was nothing like what last year's was. It was miles worse. And people are trying to conflate the two things. It's just, I mean, look, panic if you want. Be angry if, if that's how you exercise your fandom, at being angry at the team that you supposedly love. Fill your boots. But a lot of the stuff is just made up in people's heads. Look, four and six at Houston, at the Yankees, at Tampa Bay. That's fine. It's fine. It was ugly, but it's fine. I agree. Uh, Mike, last one. You are Before your arms get tired, you are a Toronto kid and a baseball fan. So the home opener, man, how's it feel? How are you feeling right now as you get set to walk into the facility? I've been really sick since opening day, so I'm not feeling especially great. And I'm not uh, especially looking forward now to what's going to be a 10-hour day of work. But, I mean, I'm sure once I get back in there and once I step on the field and look at the, the new dimensions and how much it's changed, you know, having stepped in there on the day it opened back in June of 1989, it's, it's been such a, a transformation both last year and now this year. And then getting to watch a live baseball game again at home with 40,000 people screaming, it's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be terrific. You know, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same buzz as there was last year, the year before, when everyone was really excited about the possibilities for this team. People are rightfully upset about what the Blue Jays didn't do 
in this offseason and they just feel their feelings have been validated by a 10 game road trip that they imagine was way worse than it actually was but people have the right to be upset because they were promised a perennial championship contender and this team did not make the moves in the offseason to secure um, what that should look like and what that should have been so uh, today is going to be really exciting it's going to be really interesting for me to see what the rest of this homestand is like what the crowds they draw will be like on Tuesday and Wednesday what's going to happen against the Colorado Rockies because again as I, I've said a couple of times Houston Tampa Yankees a four and six road trip absolutely fine but if you lose a series at home to the Colorado Rockies that is not fine not at all a fantastic update. You're living your dream, Mike. Enjoy it. I know you will. Man, enjoy the game tonight. Thank you, Rodney. Pre <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael. Mike Wilner of the Deep Left Field Podcast.